<laughs> I knew someone would ask me to honk. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, honk. <laughs> My name is Dan Golding, uh, and I made the music for Untitled Goose Game. So I think the appeal of Untitled Goose Game is pretty well summed up in its tagline. Uh, it's a lovely day in the village and you are a horrible goose. It is a lovely day in the village and you are a horrible, horrible goose. Like there's not a lot more to it than that. You're, you're a goose that, that, that rampages through a sort of, sort of English, British style village, which is funny because everybody who made the game is from Australia. Um, uh, and, and, and you play as a goose kind of ruining, um, you know, not terribly, not really harming anybody, but ruining people's days, stealing their food. The way that we thought of it when we were making the game was that it should sound like there is a um, pianist, like in the old days of silent movies, sitting over your shoulder, watching what's happening on screen and kind of commenting on the action with their piano playing. Uh, so I met House House uh, when I was running uh, a games festival here in uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, called the Free Play Independent Games Festival. Um, they had just started to make their very first game called Push Me Pull You. I think I sort of knew them vaguely from, you know, just around events and stuff like that, but I got them to show their game at a couple of events and one of them was in the big sort of public square here in Melbourne where there's a big screen. We set up like a little um, living room in the middle of that square with like a couch and a rug and uh, a lamp and played local indie games on the big screen. And one of them was theirs and they hadn't finished making it yet, but it was done enough so that we could have a whole bunch of kids just walking past going, oh, hey, what's that? Like, and, and start playing. Uh, and, you know, when you're doing that kind of thing, there's a lot of standing around and waiting. Uh, and during one of those periods, I was just idly chatting to them and was sort of like, what, what are you going to do for music in this game? And, you know, they had some ideas and I had some ideas and I was just kind of like, I think I could probably do something. And they said, all right, let's give it a shot. And so I gave it a shot and they liked it. And I did the soundtrack for Push Me Pudding. And that was released, I think, in 2016. Um, and then a few years later, uh, they got in touch about this new game they were making with a goose. And the rest is, the rest is what it is. The rest is history, yeah. So yeah, the, the, using Debussy in the game was pretty much happenstance. We, you know, originally the members of House House thought that Debussy might sound nice on the Gardener's radio uh, for the trailer. Um, and when we put that together, when Jake, um, Strasser, who's one of the people who works at House House, edited that trailer so well, a bunch of commenters on the internet, well, I think a lot of people who watched the trailer were sort of like, oh, great, this is how the music is going to work in the game. And we were all sort of like, oh, we don't really know how uh, dynamic music works at all, let alone how we're going to convert like these more than a hundred year old pieces. But so how do you, how do you do that? How do you convert this music into something that works for a game? And, but yeah, so then I did, uh, yeah, two performances of each of the preludes. One that's kind of what you would expect if you were a Debussy mega fan going to a concert of his preludes, and one that was way lower energy, much slower, much less intense. The, you know, the, the, the way I was hitting the notes was, was much less powerful. Um, and then went through and split both of those performances up into the same, what we called stems. I think that 
in a way, the game and what you're seeing does a lot of the work for me. It makes me look, you know, quite literally, it makes me look good. Um, during early stages of making the soundtrack, I considered whether it might be possible to use that same stem process of splitting the pieces of music up into different little beats, but identifying particular ones for particular, like, moments so you might have one that was kind of like the victory bit when you succeeded in a in a task or you might have one that was kind of the slapstick thing you know like kind of really very specific moods associated with the the, the little bits of Debussy but you know I sort of tried that and it, it was immediately clear that it wasn't going to work um we just kind of took a gamble that actually these Debussy preludes would be funny because what you're doing in the game is funny. And it's the juxtaposition between this rampaging goose and these poor villagers with this kind of, you know, this music that is a little bit funny. We deliberately chose bits of Debussy that was the you know was the funniest bits and the most appropriate bits, but that it was that juxtaposition. As I've kind of said, I mean, my background is uh, in cinema studies. That's what I teach. Um, I, I, I did a PhD on video games. That's definitely true. So I'm not completely outside of the, the games arena. But I mean, I've written a book on Star Wars. Um, I do a radio show for Australia's um, national classical radio station about film and TV music. Like, I kind of, you know, I think all of us have such involved backgrounds in such a wider variety of culture than you, you usually see from a small indie studio that I think when it comes to thinking about the kind of games that they make at House House and the music that I make, I think it's just, it's, it's part of slightly different conversations, you know, it's part of slightly different trains of, of thought and, and ways of, of thinking about an audience, I suppose. My favourite composer in general, certainly in the sort of classical sense, um, would undoubtedly be Igor Stravinsky. I think um, The Rite of Spring um, and The Firebird still just speak to me in a way that I think so few other music does. They're just so, so powerful. And I, I really admire the way that he uses the, the color of the orchestra and these just so bizarre rhythms. They're just, just so incredible. But I don't know. I am genuinely one of those people who like, you know, you, you meet at a party and you're like, oh, what's your favorite genre of music? And I'm like, oh, I really like every type of music. And usually you, you meet that kind of person. You're like, yeah, but really you don't like country or you don't like hip hop or like whatever. No, like actually, I think I have a banjo here. I love bluegrass like i i've been playing with 808s recently and trying to get that really trappy sound for like a couple of projects that i've been working on like i love so many different types of genres and i just you know like my favorite thing with any kind of music project is when someone says here is a style that i want because it allows me to really get inside a particular moment in time a particular type of music that maybe i wouldn't have necessarily spent a lot of time in before like to me that kind of prospect is the most exciting thing that any brief ever offers me